muchachos, my cool cats and kittens, and my home fries and home slices and slices of the homes. Okay. Twin Paranormal. We got Wyatt here. Y'all wanted to know what's going on with Wyatt. He's got an attachment situation and you wanted answers. Well, guess what? I got answers. And if you don't know who I am, I'm Emily the Fine Art Medium. A medium who specializes in the paranormal and, and fine art. Could you tell by the name? Okay, I'm done with my um, bullshit. So, yes. Six pages of notes later-ish. Um, I have answers. So I did DM Wyatt, though, because they're pretty high up there in terms of popularity. He probably won't see it. But if he does, awesome sauce. But um, remember how when I was trying to tap into um, River and Ryan Reese and how I was having difficulties because I didn't have spiritual permission and yada, yada, yada. Well, I have it now but I'm gonna wait a bit. However, I will say I also have permission, spiritual permission for Wyatt to go through his attachments and I will explain them. So I'm gonna go through my notes. All my notes will be posted on Patreon. Actually, they're on there now. And I'm just gonna go through them. All right, so first impressions of the channeling. Lower left stomach tinge of pain and achy lower back in line with sacral chakra partial attachment point. It felt like something grabbing onto my left shoulder, clenching, feeling like something with bony hands was touching me. So if he has that, I've only seen like two or three of their videos, so I don't know. You guys might have to like validate for me if you watch their stuff and they've mentioned that, let me know or why it or the twins, Reese brothers, if you see this video, let me know. Let me know how accurate this was, if you can validate any of it. I know paranormal stuff is hard to, to validate, especially if you can't see it with your own eyes. All right, so the pain in the lower back, at least for me, was getting worse. And so I was like, that's weird. And actually trying to channel the issues that he has actually brought issues onto me, which is nobody's fault. That's just the territory of this job here. Sometimes when I channel for cases, I experience their haunting or attachment or illness, what have you. And that's just part of me and my journey and how I ex like understand what they're going through. So even though it sucks, I actually um, prefer it because then it makes it easier for me to understand. But upon doing this, my last video, you saw that astral realm experience that I talk about. That was the first channel I tried to do for Wyatt that happened. And then I didn't make a post following, but the second attempt, almost the exact same looking entity appeared again, okay? I then had an issue with a male earthbound spirit in my room, my bedroom, and a portal too in my bedroom that he comes out of, which I kicked him out. And then last night I had an astral realm experience of the portal being there and him coming back. So that's the thing, guys, if you have paranormal activity and you cleanse the space but you don't close the portal it might help a little bit the cleansing however it will not keep it out they can just keep coming back through that stupid portal and that's what happened so now I have a portal to close and that wouldn't surprise me if like I know they're on the road a lot but if they stay at home like during break periods, if they have that going on, whether, well, specifically wide, of course. So I just thought that was weird. And that's just like a brief synopsis of the trials and tribulations of just trying to channel because I kept getting blocked. And I'm like, why am I getting blocked? Is it because I don't have permission? No, that was not why. It was because of the one attachment that Wyatt has is very territorial 
and very like protective and in a negative sense, not in a positive sense. It's kind of like he's mine. Like you ain't gonna get to him. He's mine. So he was trying to block me from seeing the truth. And well, guess what? I was able to see the truth and got past him. But yeah, I was getting head pain. Um, strangely, I was having burning feet. Why it? Is that something you experience? If not, then that's weird. But sometimes too, when I think about burning feet, I think about like how your body absorbs energy through your root chakras. And a lot of times, depending on your clear abilities or extra sensory abilities, everyone has extrasensory abilities to some degree. Some just have it like stronger than others. And that's where you have like mediums and things. But so, I mean, he does have extrasensory abilities, but there's something going on with how he's absorbing energy through his hands and his feet, but specifically his feet. So if he experiences anything with his feet and even his legs, I need to know why. I'm just curious. This is for research purposes and learning purposes only, honestly. Um, my back pain skyrocketed, like I said, and I think part of the, the one attachment, because there's actually three. There's three attachments, Wyatt. Um, one exacerbates your physical and mental health and your spiritual health, but more so your physical health. And if you're having like body pains or back pains, it's that one, and I'm gonna go through what each one of the attachments are. But I noticed that painkillers, and I am prescribed painkillers because of my chronic pain and my, all that shit, but my painkillers didn't even put a dent in it. My muscle relaxer did not even put a dent in it. Anything I took didn't freaking work and it was so bad that I spent a lot of time in bed. And that's partially why this video is so delayed. It was supposed to come out Thursday. It is now Friday and uh, yeah. So it was draining and it was hurting. Um, but yeah. I kept seeing a massive turtle that keeps hiding in its shell. I feel like if you don't have a pet turtle, a lot of times I get symbols and things that are metaphors. And I'm wondering if you're just like shy and that's like a metaphor for being shy. I feel like when you're with friends, it's not a problem. But when it's like you're out and you're, I don't know, socializing or whatever, I feel like you're the kind of person that might be on the shire end or it takes a little bit for you to like be comfortable but i'm guessing that's what the metaphor is you can correct me if i'm wrong but if you know what this metaphor is for yeah again let me know down below um yeah so the first channel was hijacked the second channel was wasn't really hijacked per se but the same entity popped in so on 228 is when I experienced a similar experience, but not as severe as the first one, but with the same entity. And now that I've finished the channel, I know what it is. It's one of the attachments. 229, so I pick up again. So I start feeling a warm hand on my upper arm but it was weird because my arm was cold to the touch. And then I was feeling that same warmth near my wrist, my left wrist. Yeah, so the three of them, River, Ryan, and Wyatt, have all worked together before in a past life. Spirit just thought it would be cool to mention that. But y'all have worked together in past lives. You've been reincarnated, and so all of you are part of the same soul family. And many of the lessons they have learned have been learned together. I started feeling burning on the center of my back. I don't have issues with the center or upper part of my back whatsoever. Lower part of my back is usually the issue and entities like to attack me there. 
But so when I start feeling things towards the middle and upper part of the back, that is my symbol for an attachment. You know, it could be different for everybody. So, you know, just because you feel something weird on your back doesn't necessarily mean it's an attachment. That's just my like symbol for it that I've kind of like came up with spirit. All right, so now the second page is where I have some images and things that I'll share somewhere here. But I kept seeing a spider and it's very similar to how um, like CJ, he's terrified of spiders. So I don't know if there's something to do with that, but one of the entities is a parasitic spider entity. So that is important to note. Um, I keep seeing a large, what seems like a singular mountain in a dry terrain area. Dirt is dry, but there are some hardy shrubs that can handle the dry land. Oh, and the church. That's how I know the entity that hijacked the reading is involved. Because when I went back to meditate, the church came back up and I was like, that's weird. I was looking into the Blair Witch symbol because every time I do anything related to the twin paranormal and then Wyatt, um, that symbol keeps popping up and I'm like, why? I already know they all have it. What's going on with the symbol? But there's something going on with the symbol. Um, there's an energy tied to it and it's interesting too that, you know, all three of them, they do have an attachment. Of course, Wyatt has three. But not only that, Colin from Paranormal Files also has an attachment. And it's just interesting because they all four have the same tattoo. So I went digging. I'm like, okay, the Blair Witch symbol, like, what is it? Is there some tie to Wicca, witchcraft, something? So the Blair Witch symbol isn't just a random symbol the producer of the movie made up because of a dream he had. Sticks have been used in various pagan practices, similar to how the Tuanas or stick men are used in the movie. So you have things such as claromancy, and then you have alphabets, stick hexes, wards, runes, etc. So claromancy, if you don't know what it is, that's like casting bones or sticks, and it's like you read them based off of how they land and the shapes and stuff. And even if it was just like a dream, there's still a negative connotation associated with that symbol, which leaves room for creating thought forms and various types of negative energies associated with the symbols. So just because, you know, something's made up, well, how are thought forms made up? Through one's imagination, you put enough energy towards that specific thing, you can create it. You have things like Slenderman, you have cryptids. Some of these things are thought forms that are created because enough people's, you know, intentions, thoughts, energies are put into it and it creates something that is quote unquote real. So you also have that to take into consideration. And because you know, the Blair Witch Project is like a horror movie, it's, already got like a bad rap like that symbol like when people see that symbol they know it's bad and so there's that negative energy associated with it there's a there's a um piece of a website i wanted to read and i'll give you the um i'll link down the information the link of where this is from cultnation.com the act of making simple structures out of found branches and twigs is part of childhood play in many wooded and rural communities. Traditional crafts and building techniques such as, and I'm going to butcher this, is it copus, wood furniture, and wattle and daub structures also strike visual similarities. Part of the eeriness of such constructions is the ability to blend into nature for them to seem both man-made and natural in the same instance, they can integrate into their surroundings, making space, but potentially going unnoticed like a tangle of branches and vines that one might encounter on any walk in the woods. One of the clearest analogs between stick hexes and something from real life practice is trail markings. Before 
the system of trail blazes and plastic markers that is common today. Paths were often marked with natural materials found locally to the site. Many scouting guides publish systems for making trails in this method. A similar system made its way into UK popular culture through the depiction of a Roma community in the Ya novel Five Go to Mystery More, 1954 from the Famous Five series and its later television adaptions in 1978 and 1996. Claire Mancy, the casting of lots as a form of divination is also a possible connection while a whole range of objects have been used in Claremancy, there is a long tradition of using sticks and bones. Tessitus, I hope I said that right, wrote an early ethnographic account of the practice in his Germania 98 AD chapter 10. Beyond trail markings and divination, there are Tangen tangential relationships to other folk practices. Echoes of corn dollies and voodoo dolls can be seen in the Tuanas stickmen of the Blair Witch franchise. Production designer Ben Rock has stated that director Daniel Merrick had suggested something in line with voodoo dolls appearing in the woods during the development of the film. As part of the pre-production, Rock, largely working on props alone, realized he needed something more simplified in order to produce objects in, in mass, like in mass quantity. While researching markings to use in the development of other scenes, Rock found his solution. On page 79 of Nigel Pennick's Magical Alphabets, he discovered an illustration of what the author described as a rune man. The motif found in timber frame construction was a simple design of four linear elements. So this is how they kind of figured the symbol out here. Realizing he could quickly produce dozens of rune men by binding four sticks together with string and demonstrated the process for the directors on camera. While it didn't initially seem to elicit excitement from the crew, what would go on to be referred to as stickmen or twanas became the visual icon for the film's mythology carried across three feature-length films and related media projects. Okay, so Blair Witch symbol meaning. The stick figures are the totems of the Blair Witch Eddie Kedward and co-director Sanchez told Watch Mojo, the symbols act as a portal. It's interesting that in the astral experience that I had, I see a portal on my wall and this old looking man be popping out of it and just looking creepy and not so nice. So the fact that they kind of designated like a meaning to it puts forth that intention behind the symbol and what it could potentially do. So that's a problem. And that's why I don't recommend getting tattoos of sigils and symbols, especially of, if, even if it's from a movie, I don't recommend it. Is it a cool tattoo? Absolutely. But they kind of assigned a meaning to it and energetically, it's not good. All right, so continuing. All of a sudden, I wake up and I'm like, why do I want SpaghettiOs? I can't even eat SpaghettiOs because of the dairy in it, but whatever. Random as fuck. Maybe has something to do with him or me. Who the fuck knows? Um, oh, also this morning I had an astral rum experience where I met a being claiming to be Ishtar. However, I don't feel like that has any correlation to why I just thought it was weird how every time I would try to channel I fell asleep last night trying to channel and then all these weird experiences with Ishtar I'm not saying it is or isn't Ishtar but a being claiming to be Ishtar it wasn't like a negative experience it was just uh, 
it was interesting. And I'll post, you know, the Astroworm experience on Patreon too. Um, but yeah. So, okay, let's get into the attachments here. So the first thing Spirit wanted to point out is, yes, there's three attachments. However, you know, if you can't get them all removed simultaneously, if you're gonna do one at a time, it's very important that you focus on the one that's causing the most um, issues. And in this case, that would be like the um, entity that looks like a spider that is parasitic because um, it's making him feel yucky. It's making him feel exhausted. And you know, along with that, I kept seeing him drink energy drinks. Could this be like, a metaphor or symbolism of him feeling tired perhaps or could it be more literal of him actually chugging energy drinks I'm not quite sure either way I still get the feeling that he's tired and I will say trying to channel in this information made me really tired so yes this one needs to go first um, this entity was created as a byproduct of black magic in conjunction with a bug-like entity that was already in existence. So it's kind of like the black magic or the whatever you want to call it, dark magic, kind of clung to this entity or it fed off of it. Either way, it kind of combined it, combined, com yeah, whatever. It fused together to make that entity worse and i believe this one was picked up in some kind of burial ground so whether that's like a graveyard a cemetery somewhere where bodies are laid to rest and this could have happened on an investigation it could have happened when they were younger and if they lived near a cemetery only he knows like Maybe there was an investigation where he knew something was off. That could have been the point of entry. Um, when you say things like, take my energy and communicate, boom, attachment. Don't do that. And I said this before in a previous video about them. Do not ever offer your energy to anything. Please, please, for the safety of yourself, do not do that. Don't offer for things to follow you. Please don't do that. It leaves the body feeling drained, exhausted, heavy, eyes burning from being tired. So that's what I was feeling. And it drains the life force and negative energy from the living. So he needs multiple Reiki or energy healing sessions ASAP. If left on check, the entity can bring or make the person more susceptible to mental or physical or spiritual health illnesses this entity also slowly eats away at the auric field which weakens a person's natural defenses against spiritual energetic entity attacks so that's why it's very important to work on this one first because it can leave you open for worse attachments and you do not want that because our body is constantly emitting um an auric field an energy field it tries to naturally repair itself. However, the rate in which the entity is like wearing it down is faster than your body can fix. So that's why another reason you want to get this fixed. Second attachment. This one is the very, okay, this one is a bitch. Why? Because it tried to block the heck out of me from seeing it. This one does a lot of like, if he's having any negative um, sleeping experiences, as in like nightmares, um, sleep paralysis, stuff like that, it's because of this entity. So this one's very tricky, very manipulative, um, very deceptive, but it essentially it is a negative male earthbound spirit. And if he tries to, or they try to talk to it via like a spirit box or necrophonic or whatever, the apps, um, don't believe everything it says. It's a liar. And he's mad that I'm saying that, but I don't care. Um, this spirit is constantly watching Wyatt and the other two. 
which most likely is causing him and them to feel like they're being watched constantly. Um, like I said, causing nightmares and or patterns of negative thoughts. Someone close to him more than likely is the cause of this attachment, whether it was intended or not, but also it's giving generational ties too. But because it's part of their soul lesson plan, um, part of their lessons that they got to learn during this lifetime. And I just want to give this like brief note here. Sometimes friends and family members that have attachments can jump from person to person based off of that spirit's preference or like let's say the spirit or entity likes another person's energy better. Um, technically that's how my haunting began. And actually River, Ryan, and Wyatt somewhat share this male entity due to how close they are to one another. And that was one thing spirit wanted to reiterate was that this entity, this earthbound spirit is shared between the three of them. And he was partially blocking me from getting information for River and Ryan, but also because of um, the permission thing. In a way, it's sort of like a curse, but it's more of a lesson that has to be like figured out that they all three have to learn. This male earthbound spirit is very protective of those three, more territorial because what it's doing isn't protective at all. It's just, it's like I said earlier, it's kind of like, this is mine. It blocks those with abilities from seeing the truth. It's trying to get them to think it's harmless, but in actuality, it's very, 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 very negative and manipulative. It's trying to get them to want it to stick around so it doesn't leave. So like by communicating with it and using the spirit boxes and the EVP meters, that's making it stay. Partially, that's what's keeping it there. It is also blocking River, Ryan, and Wyatt from their full potential from being able to use their abilities. Like I said, everyone has their own abilities, and it's just a, a level, really, um, of how far they can use those. And so, yeah, it's blocking their um, full potential. Not saying that they're going to be, like, amazing mediums, but... It's dulling some of them down a bit. And then the third attachment. It is a thought form created out of past traumas and crappy situations in addition to the residual energy that he takes home with him from investigations. It also impacts emotions and in combination with negative earthbound spirit, it makes it worse. This thing looks the scariest, but in terms of harm, the other two are significantly worse. And one thing I did forget to mention about the earthbound spirit, it's really good at creating illusions and making him look scarier than, you know, he really is. And he can also enhance the illusions and make the other attachments look worse than they are as well. He kind of wants to give that vibe of it's hopeless, you're never going to be able to get rid of them kind of thing, so you don't get rid of them. But they are it's very possible to get rid of them. So don't listen to that. So summary and solution. Overall, there's three attachments, the parasitic bug entity that looks like a spider, the negative male earthbound spirit, and the thought form entity. In terms of removal, it is important to have all of them removed, but if one can only remove one at a time, focus on the parasitic bug spider thing, First, due to its direct impact to the overall health, then the negative earthbound spirit with the thought form being last. Solution, it is always recommended to take care of any mental health issues along with their origin, if possible, and working on unresolved or unhealed traumas, either through shadow work, which is like your self healing, you can do it through meditation, whatever you want, Reiki or energy work, and or therapy, especially if you can't work through your stuff on your own. Therapy is a great alternative. They can get to the nitty gritty of why, you know, you feel certain ways and what um, issues were brought on from certain uh, situations and so on and so forth. So it is a great alternative. 
Um, by doing this, you remove the anchor or point of attachment. Negative entities and spirits use these things against you to perpetuate the feeding cycle, but also hide within traumas to remain attached. A person doesn't have to be 100% healed for this to help rid attachments. It's just the more healed a person is, the better it will be. And then when you have lower level like attachments, when you're healed, some of them will naturally pop off on their own. Going to an energy healer and or someone who specializes in removing negative energies or spirit attachments is extremely beneficial. Sometimes if you're lucky, you can find one that will just remove your attachments. However, just keep in mind that even though they might not be right on you, you still have to work on your mental health and stuff so they don't come back. Um, especially for those who spend a lot of time in the paranormal field. So like I was saying, some healers can literally pull the attachment off, but if the person doesn't identify or fix the mode of entry, either the same entity or one similar in vibration will take its place. So if mental health issues are part of the problem, that's another reason one needs to take care of them. Cleansing the body and equipment after every investigation is key. So you don't take anything back with you. Sage and Palo Santo smoke or Copal and frankincense smoke around the body and equipment can help. Grounding yourself with nature, protective crystals, ritual or energy healing baths. I say ritual baths because it's just easier, but essentially like for me, when I feel yucky energetically, I'll create a herbal bath of like protective herbs, throw them in a bathtub, you soak in it with the intention of getting rid of that negative energy and voila. And yeah, very helpful. Staying away from risky activities such as unsafe divination practices such as using a Ouija board. A lot of paranormal investigators like to play with the Ouija board, but a lot of them don't see the um, consequence. So I highly recommend staying away from doing that shit. I mean, sure, it might make your um, video a little entertaining, but honestly, it's kind of just pissing off a, the spirits and entities within the location that are already there, and two, the viewers, because they're like, you're being not smart, you know what I mean? Or doing any kind of rituals of unknown origins, social media challenges, like Bloody Mary, or like, if you say a certain entity's name three times and you look in the mirror in the dark and blah, 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 blah whatever, seances, I don't recommend. I know some mediums like their seances, I don't think it's very responsible. Can they be done safely, perhaps? But I think it takes someone that's very knowledgeable. Don't investigate in your home. A lot of people like to investigate in their home, either out of boredom or for content. Don't do it. Even if your house is already haunted, when you use devices and things, you're actually not only pulling things within the vicinity, but you can attract new things into the vicinity that you probably don't want. So don't be doing that shit in your house. Your house is supposed to be a sacred and safe place for you to be. Do not make it worse. People who buy haunted houses, I understand. They do it for shits and giggles, for fun, research purposes, whatever. Again, doing investigations, it's, it's different when you're doing it for research, but at the end of the day, it's like when you're done and you need to rest, it doesn't help you when the place you need to go back to and rest is just perpetuating the problem and the cycle of draining your energy. So 10 out of 10, don't recommend. Also 10 out of 10, don't recommend purposely getting haunted objects because that kind of goes along with that as well. Stay away from working or worshiping negative spirits, entities, or beings, deities, etc. Anyway, so that is my TED talk. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, but seriously, that is the advice I would give. If you need more information, again, Wyatt, I did DM you, and you can always message me on there. We can do it privately, publicly, whatever you want. I don't care. The whole point is to help educate 
the paranormal community and to keep everybody safe. So I don't want anything from anybody, okay? Fame or whatever the fuck. I'm doing this to help other people. So yeah, I'm going to end this video now. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this. I hope this answered some questions. And again, if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, concerns, leave them down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video and help me share it to Twin Paranormal and Wyatt so they see this video. Because again, the whole point is to help them. Please, we wanna help them get rid of their attachments, their funny bunch, and I wish them nothing but love and success. And yeah, peace out everyone.